Hello, and welcome back to the Handy Outdoorsman. Um, today, I'm going to be unboxing a new smoker that I picked up at my local Bass Pro Shop. They had a sale on them. I was able to pick it up for under 150 bucks. So I thought it was a pretty good deal. Been wanting to upgrade my smoker anyway, so this was just uh, a great deal and bargain for me. So what I have here is the uh, Masterbuilt uh, Propane Smoker, model number uh, MPS 230. And it's an entry level smoker. And for me, you know, that, that's perfect. Um, there's just, um, you know, my family's not large. I don't do a lot of barbecuing or entertaining over the grill. So this will work out perfect for me. Haven't done a video in a while, so I thought I'd bring you along as I unbox it, assemble it, and season it. Uh, before I do my uh, first cook in it. So let's uh, open up the box, see what's inside, and uh, put it together. Well, just from the initial unboxing, uh, looks like it's pretty well put together. Um, I've got everything neatly packaged inside so that uh, you know, you can just pull it out. Pretty, there doesn't seem to be much in these boxes. They're relatively light. And they are numbered, so that's a nice thing. So I'm assuming that uh, since they're numbered one through four, we'll open box number one first. At this point, I've unboxed all the boxes and then have all the parts associated with it. And what I can tell is that uh, the steps through the installation manual is associated with the box. So they've laid it out very well. They packed it very well. Um, the only thing that I don't know yet is that's a miss is when I opened up box number four, um, there's nothing in it. So I'm not sure if it was just packing to keep the box or the everything uh, so nothing else moves around in there and it's just an empty box for packing I don't know but we'll find out when I finish the assembly but so far I'm pretty impressed with um, how they packed it and how they've uh, laid things out for the assembly so I'll skip the part of actually assembling it all because the instructions that they have are very detailed uh, but what I'll do is, now that I have everything laid out, so I'll time myself and see how long it takes me to put this together. But with the way everything is laid out and the way the manual is, shouldn't take long at all. So we should be good. Okay, I got the, uh, the unit assembled and it took me 29 minutes. And that's even with uh, getting a set of these front legs in the wrong position. I had to take them off and put them back on. But other than that, uh, the instructions uh, were pretty much just a picture, put this here, put that there, not, uh, you know, part A goes to with part B. But it's pretty simple to follow. I did it in 29 minutes uh, with one mistake. Uh, but looking at the unit fully I with everything this unit, in it um, will work out just fine for me. However, there are a few modifications that I plan on making based upon uh, other reviews that I've seen on uh, the internet. Number one is the pan at the bottom. So this pan here is where you put your chips uh, on top of the burner. I've read online where over time this, this burns out pretty quickly and though nobody's really given a, a timetable as far as when it does, uh, they do say that it burns out. What a lot of people have done is they've taken a cast iron skillet and put in here. So when I purchased this unit, I purchased a $15 12 inch cast iron skillet and that's what I'll be putting in here once this uh, burns out. The second thing that people have done is that there's no seal going around the door itself. It's strictly a, a friction fit, metal to metal. So the door is closed right now. I have it latched. So right around the latch, it's really tight. But at the top, 
you can see that there's a bit of a gap right there and the same thing at the bottom so you know how much smoke is going to come out of that versus staying inside the way it's supposed to i don't know but that's one of the things that a lot of people or a modification that a lot of people make is they put a seal around the door so i ordered a rope seal to go around uh, the opening where the gaps are and uh, the latches are adjustable so I'll be able to to make a secure fit on the door I'm hoping uh, that that will uh, solve that issue of smoke coming out uh, where it's not supposed to and the third thing I've done is I've gotten um, an external thermometer because the one that comes with the unit, they say that it's very difficult to, to keep, uh, uh, read the temperature. It's not very accurate. Whereas here, I've got some external probes and I'll be able to uh, monitor the temperature and keep it a little bit more accurate. One goes in the meat, one goes in the smoker itself so I can watch the, the temperature on both. And... Um, this is a, a, a Thermapro and it, it's gotten good reviews. I haven't used it yet, but I'm hoping with this smoker here that uh, it will definitely uh, be an improvement. So those are uh, the, the modifications that I'm gonna make uh, to the smoker. So I've washed everything down, washed the racks, uh, just gently wiped everything down on the inside. Um, so now I got a, a new uh, paintbrush here and then I've got some bacon grease and grapeseed oil. And I'm just gonna take this and then uh, just brush it on on all the surfaces so that I get a nice uh, even coat everywhere. And then we'll go ahead and season it for a couple of hours. So let me go ahead and uh, wipe this down. And I'm only doing the inside. I've got the uh, seasoning going on right now. This is the external probe that I have. So right now it's 178 and climbing. So it seems to be okay. Um, but not as accurate or detailed. I mean, this scale goes in increments of 100, or I'm sorry, 50, 50 degrees. So it's kind of nice to have the external one. So we'll get this up here. The book says to get it up to 325 degrees, and that's what we'll do. So, as you can see here, where the smoke's coming out of the, the door right here. There's a nice uh, steady stream coming out of there. And in the back is where, um, you know, there's a spot for, you know, you can let, regulate the airflow, but we'll, uh, We'll keep that kind of closed up for right now. Okay guys, it's been uh, two days since I assembled the, the smoker. I ran out of light the first day to finish showing you uh, the seasoning process, but that finished up just fine. And then I wanted to do a second seasoning on it, but at the same time I thought, you know what, I've got some uh, venison sausage that I want to make, so I put that together real quick threw that in the smoker and I was able to uh, do a slow smoke yesterday with uh, uh, the venison sausage and it turned out pretty good. I got a little bit more practice to do as far as the consistency of the meat but as far as flavor goes it was perfect. So today we have some ribs. So I plan on putting uh, three slabs of ribs on the grill I'm going to do the 3 2 one method, which there's hundreds of YouTube videos out there on how to do that. But it's basically three hours unwrapped, two hours wrapped, another hour unwrapped with sauce. So let me do that today. 
I'll try and record a little bit of that and let you know what the results are, and then I'll give you my final opinion on this master-built propane smoker. All right, let me rack these up, get them in the smoker. So we're about um, two hours in. Been coming out every half hour or so, and then just kind of spritzing them down with some apple juice. So they're probably about 140, 145. Got a little bit more to go. Okay guys, it's uh, six hours later and I'm finished with the ribs. Now I'd have to say that I'm very pleased with the results that I got out of this smoker. So um, I would give this smoker the, the handyman thumbs up as far as uh, something that's pretty uh, easy to use and the results is pretty good. I was able to get a nice smoke ring on these ribs. They're very moist on the inside but yet I was able to achieve a, a nice crisp bark on the outside. So that's, that's like how I like my barbecue. So um, I'm definitely going to be using this smoker a lot. Now I was able to maintain a temperature of 225, 230 degrees pretty easy by just uh, adjusting the flame uh, on the propane bottle or the uh, switch on the smoker itself. Now yesterday, I smoked some venison sausage. Now that was a little bit more difficult because the sausage requires a lower temperature and in different increments. So they, you know, the directions uh, for the sausage I had called for like 110 degrees for an hour, 130 for another hour, 150 for another hour. I had a difficult time keeping the smoker at those temperatures uh, below 180. I kept having to open the door and trying to keep the heat uh, adjusted so it was a lot of watch time in order to, to uh, achieve those temperatures. Um, but you know if you're if you're doing ribs and or something else it, it works out perfect. Now I'm going to keep playing around with the smoker and uh, because I plan on doing a lot more sausage uh, recipes and you know I'll, I'll figure it out and I'll uh, I'll uh, let you know how that turns out. But overall, I think this is a great smoker. So again, um, very happy with the results. So if you're looking for a smoker, uh, this is definitely a nice one. So I appreciate you watching, tuning in. Uh, I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, you know, give it a thumbs up and uh, hit that like button. So until the next video, I uh, appreciate you watching. Take care and God bless.